On my website, I have this animated GIF. And so you can see, here's the earlier picture. And then eventually it works its way up to the more current picture. This is actually about two years old. But there's about 12 years of difference between those pictures. But of course, I had to produce a bunch of intermediate images to produce this animated GIF. I produced those images using a Python program that I wrote that used linear interpolation to find the corresponding values for the intermediate pictures. So let's look and see how I did that. So let's say we have this right here. Now, pictures are made up of pixels, right, or picture elements. It's a bunch of little dots. But let's say that one of those values was 30, and I want to work my way up to 36. And I want to do it in two steps, or really it's going to be three steps, but I want two intermediate values. And so I'm going to get from 30 to 36 in n equals 2 plus 1 steps. So the last one, the third one here, will actually produce 36. So how will I do that? I picked these numbers on, on purpose to make it easy just to check the values. I can look at this and realize it's going to be 30, 32, 34, 36. But the formula I'm going to use is this. I'm going to have the first value plus the difference in the two values. So it's going to be last minus first divided by n. And then I'm going to have a step counter. So i is equal to current step. And so using this example, we would have 30 plus 36 minus 30 over 3i, which is 30 plus, this would be 6, so 6 thirds, or 2i, right? So 6 divided by 3 would be 2. And if I test this out, we can see here's i, here's the formula. So when it's 0, I have 30 plus 2 times 0 equals 30. That's my first value. Right? That's this right here, or what we started with. So we don't actually need to produce that. We have 1. We have 30 plus 2 times 1 equals 32. When it's 2, we have 30 plus 2 times 2 equals 34. And when it's 3, which is our n, we have 30 plus 2 times 3 equals 36. This is the last value, and that means these are the intermediate values. So let's see how I'm going to do it on the image. So going back to what I said a moment ago, we can think of an, an image as, as a collection of dots or pixels. In reality, it's a three-dimensional object because it has layers. When I read it in, the way it comes in is actually in the RGB color format for what I'm doing, which means you would have a red layer, a green layer, and a blue layer. And for any corresponding position, like in the upper left-hand corner, the three values together will produce that color that you see. But we're going to pretend these are simple two-by-two two images with a single layer. So this would be the first one. This would be the last one we want to get to. And I picked different values to make sure my formula was working correctly. So here I'm going from 10 to 4, which means that the amount that I add to my initial value of 10 needs to be negative each time. I want to make sure my formula does that. Going from 4 to 16, that works the way I just showed you. It might be a case where I go from 20 to 20, so there should be no changes, so I should be adding zero each time. And then I would assume in the vast majority of cases, it would be like the last scenario, which is going from one to four, but for a particular step size, I would end up with uh, non-integer values as some of the intermediate values. I picked numbers that made it easy where most of these will be integers, but in reality, they probably won't be. So let's say that we want five intermediate values And so therefore, n should be 5 plus 1 equals 6. 5 plus 1 equals 6. All right? So if we look at a couple of these, we'd have 10 plus 
4 minus 10 over the 6 I will be 10 plus this will be negative 6 over positive 6 be negative 1 so it could have been 10 minus 1 I then we'll do this one 4 plus 16 minus 4 over 6 I is equal 4 plus 16 minus 4 would be 12 divided by 6 would be 2 I let's do a couple others here 20 plus 20 minus 20 over 6 I is equal to 20 plus 0 I so it won't change and finally 1 plus 4 minus 1 over 6i be 1 plus 4 minus 1 is 3 divided by 6 1 half i. Let me test this. So when it's 0 I should get my 10, my 4, my 20, and my 1. So these are my first values which I won't actually produce again. 1, if we look at the formula for this, 10 minus 1 will be 9. Let's go ahead and write these out. And then we have I is 2, 10 minus 2 would be 8. And this will be 7, 6, 5, and 4. And of course this last row is my last values. So these would be the intermediate. So for this right here, for 10, going from 10 to 4 in steps of negative 1, I go 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, and finally 4 to produce the last value. But it's for i is equal 1 to 5 will get me the actual intermediate values. Let's do the next one. 4 plus 2 will be 6. 4 plus 4 will be 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. There's the 16 I got. 20. It's going to be 20 plus 0, 20 plus 0, 20 plus 0. So these all be 20s. 20 plus 0. And finally, the last one I'm adding one half each time. So it's be 1 and a half. 2, 2 and a half, 3, 3 and a half, and 4, and 4 was my last value. So it looks like I thought of the correct scenarios, and my formula works for decreasing, increasing, staying flat. In this case, it's increasing by uh, a fractional amount. So it looks like that all works. So how might I actually do this? I've written these with this formula and done them individually. But Pythons don't let me be smart about it. Let's pretend these were matrices. So when I'm looking at the part right here where I want to produce the difference, 4 minus 10, right, or this, this 4 minus 10, 16 minus 4, 20 minus 20, and 4 minus 1. Remember we said it was last minus first. That was on uh, the first sheet. I can actually treat these as matrices and once again in Python it actually be a three-dimensional object so 4 minus 10 be minus 6 16 minus um, sorry I wrote this down wrong this should be 20 I knew something was off 20 minus 20 be 0, 16 minus 4 be 12, and 4 minus 1 is 3. Those were the initial differences I had, and then we scaled those by 6. So diff divided by n will be equal to Minus 6 divided by 6 be minus 1, 0 divided by 6 be 0, 12 divided by 6 is 2, and 3 divided by 6 is 1 half. And we can see minus 1, 2, 0, and 1 half. Those are values I had. So I can actually do all this at once. I don't have to have a loop or, or look at individual values. I can do the entire three-dimensional object like this. 
And then ultimately, I can take my first value, which is this. I can write my matrix in the code will be like this. It would be, you know, 10, 4, 21, uh, plus my difference. So really, I'm have whatever the I value is divided by my N is 6. And then in my code, I actually still had the diff. Minus 6, 0, 3, 12. So I can do it like this and do it all basically on one line of code. Or produce the difference and then do this if I want to or whatever. So let's look at the code that actually does that. I think that covers most of the scenarios that uh, we need to think about. So here's my code. So to produce the animated GIF, I looked at this link. You can look for anything, but let's go back to here for a moment and show you. Ultimately, I'm going to use this tool called Image Magic. It's available on Linux and other platforms. You can see right here, Linux, Windows, Mac OS, iOS, Android. You can get the different binaries or whatever you can download, actually. Go to the download page. You can see the different binaries. It's easy to install on Linux, or it may already be installed, depending on what you have. And then it has a, a tool called Convert. Convert can do what seems like almost anything. And so that's ultimately what I use to produce the anime GIF once I produce intermediate uh, images. So here's the line of code that I ultimately will use. Convert, and then tell it to resize it so I'll produce some monster image, produce a certain delay factor. I told it uh, zero here for loop. I'm not quite sure what that means. All the images I will produce will have mid at the beginning and be JPEG, and this will be the final name. All right. So let's look at the bottom here. So I'll start with the young picture, the old picture. And in this case, I said, okay, let's produce 10 intermediate images. So when I wrote the code, this is the entire program right here. The top part was that comment. I wanted, for testing purposes, I wanted to see the images instead of saving them. So I wrote this flag here that I pass in. And so if we come into here, if it says, if true, then it simply shows the image. But if it's false, it comes down here and it saves the image. So that made it a little bit easier to test. Let's see what happens when I run that. So, and I have an alias for Python to use just P. Uh, so we'll morph. So this is actually the first intermediate image. You can't tell. Now it's starting to become a little more clear. See, it's getting a little fuzzy. In fact, I can see part of an eyeball right there. Really fuzzy. Because there's so many intermediate images, it's, it's much more gradual when it changes. And so those are the 10, uh, or actually nine intermediate images. So here's the code. So I pass in the two names for the files I want to process. I am one will be the first image. I am two will be the last image. Here's where I take the diff of those. Now to do that, I found that I need to convert the types to ints uh, because actually they were unsigned ints. And so I might get negative amounts. So I need them to actually be ints. If they're still unsigned ints, I can't represent negative numbers. And remember, some of our values were changing in a negative way. They were starting up here and working their way down, like when we went from 10 to 4. So I need to, be able to represent negative numbers for that part. And then here's my loop. I start at 1, and while less than n, because I'm only producing the intermediate values, i is equal 0 would be our first picture. i is equal to n would, in theory, be my last image, but because a round off might not truly be that. But I don't need those. I just need the intermediate values. So I go from 1 to n minus 1. Here's where I produce the new value. So it's i am 1 plus the difference between the images divided by n times i. If we go back to my formula, that's like what I'm doing here. Going from 10 to the difference between the two images divided by n times i. So I did it all in one line of code. Now, to save the image, though, it still needs to be an unsigned 8-bit int. So here's where I convert it back. So it really took two lines of code to do the work, or three if you want to count this. All right? 
And then here's a code that says either show it to me or save it. So now let's save those and produce the uh, GIF. I'm going to change this to false. Now when I run it, I'm going to produce all those images. And if we look, there they are, mid one, mid two, mid three. I put the zeros in here. I tell it to write it. That's over here. I tell it to make it two numbers uh, with the zero at the first number if it's less than two digits for what it produces. So that way they sort properly. Because what if I'd said 15? Well, I don't want to go from 1 to 15 or 1 to 11 to 12 to 13, 14 to 15 back to 2 if I didn't have the zero. And now let's combine those using my code right here. And then we'll look and see what it produces. There's my animated GIF. Now you notice the way this works is a little bit different than what we have on my web page. One, I don't think I produce the same number of intermediate pictures. Here I think I have a whole lot of intermediate pictures in order to make it much more gradual. But notice what it does here. It starts with the young one and it works its way to getting older, and then it starts working its way back to the young one again. Whereas here, once it gets to the old one, it jumps immediately back to the beginning. So what I actually did, like I said, I can't remember how many intermediate images I had, but let's say I had three. So here's what I did, I think. I said, okay, we have the first one. We'll use F for that. First, and then uh, pick one, pick two, pick three, last, or L there. If I stop here, I'd have something similar to what we just saw me produce, where once it gets to the last one, then it jumps back to this. So then what I did was I said, okay, instead of just stopping there, now I have P3, P2, P1. So it's going from the oldest one to the newest one, back down to the oldest one, and then once it gets here, it jumps back to the beginning, which is F, I'll put it down here to show it's not really on that line. So that's how it essentially wraps back around. So that's how I smoothed it out to smoothly go from young to old back to young. But anyway, that's the process. And we can see, uh, sorry, I'm trying to get back here on my, here. This is all it takes to do this in Python, because it's doing all the work. There's the last line of code. That's the whole thing. Because really, you know, this line and this line do all the real work. Now, could you have written it like in Seek or something where you went through a set of nested loops? In this case, I need three loops because I had three layers. I could have used three loops to go through and compare the values. Uh, if I wanted to use a lot of loops, but why do that? The reason I use Python is to make my life easier, and that's what we did here. But this is linear interpolation.